This is Comic Picks by The Glick. And I'm your host, Jason Glick. Yes, and now, with um, the holiday season um, almost upon us, I figure it's time to um, give out some nice recommendations for what comics to buy for this this year. And, you know, rather than just toss out a whole bunch of whole bunch of recommendations for comics I've liked over the year, I figure just focus on two. The two best comics I think anyone could have in their collection. Mm-hmm. Now, in no particular order, well... Okay, actually, I'll admit, this is my second favorite comic series ever, mm-hmm. is um, The Sandman, written by um, Neil Gaiman, mm-hmm. and illustrated by a host of immensely talented artists. Is that a completed series, then? Yes, it, uh, that's kind of a complex question, but, right. so we'll get back to that later. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> this basic, basic story of The Sandman is the story of Morpheus, one of the Dream, one of the seven, en- seven of the Endless, um, beings who govern, govern various things. Various aspects of mankind because mm-hmm. there's let's see there's dream death destiny delirium desire despair destruction okay. and it's a very interesting family there but uh, I'll get back to that in a second but the <laughs> series focuses on dream because he, he governs, governs all of mankind's dreams it's his realm that you enter every night when you fall asleep mm-hmm. yeah and the story and en- begins with him being captured by. By Hugh Magus, who was originally trying to capture Death, but instead captures Dream, and tries to bargain with him for gifts of immortality and and other magical gifts. Dream refuses and spends the next seventy years and and trapped in this guy's basement. <laughs> he escapes eventually and uh, takes his vengeance upon the upon the man's son, and then about sets about the tricky business of rebuilding his rebuilding his realm because it has gone to shit in the meantime. His dream empire, as it were. Uh, not really an empire dream. It's just like a realm. Okay. Yeah, and essentially, like, this, as Gaiman has told, has said in interviews, that the story is basically of um, of dream learning that I, that in order to, ch- to survive, you have to change or die, and then he has to make his makes his decision of what which one of those options he has to pick because it's because it, he go, he goes on trying trying to find out what's like what what is he. Because like his his time in imprisonment has changed him, he is not the same being that he was before, and he realizes that in the end he's got he's got to do something. He can't continue on as he is. He's either become, become something more, or cease to be. Mm. And the and the um and his efforts to try try and change basically um have have him take the, take the form of him rounding up old old aspects of his of his realm which have escaped into the real world to either um. To either just be just just set up their own dream empire to just experience human life, or to just inspire humans to kill, which takes place in a very interesting convention of serial killers in Volume Two, The Doll's House. Mm. Yeah, and then later, then it'll, it's also takes form of him trying to um, settle old scores, which is when he realizes that he had acted callously towards a, a lover who who he condemned to hell after she um, refused refused his advances. He realizes that he has to go and save her, which doesn't turn out so well because because uh, that is in his his efforts to rebuild his realm. He got he got, he got on Lucifer Morningstar's bad side, and so what does Lucifer decide to do? Hey, I'm gonna quit hell, and you know what? You can have the key. This takes place in um, volume th- volume four, season of mists, which is a great story because a- after um after Dream Morpheus comes into. Th- Possession of the most desirable piece of psychic real estate on the market, he is um, bombarded by every um, surviving deity and god from Norse, Norse mythology to the realms of fairy to Japanese gods, and they all want the key, and he has no idea what to do with it. the um, The resolution of this ha- the situation, however, is extremely well done, and it makes perfect sense. Hmm. Yeah. After all, now, like now after this, though, um, Gaiman may also take. Does lots of um, interesting short short stories between all, um, it's like between all the major arcs. I mean, he'll just do like little random things, like talking about like a history of um if you're certain of a certain were- of a particular werewolf in um, mm. in Eastern Europe, or meeting with his sister Death, who's probably like the perkiest perkiest embodiment of the of the spirit of death that you could ever imagine in any kind of fiction. <laughs> and also the tell the, the um the first and only emperor of the United States. Emperor, emperor, yeah, he actually existed. I, I didn't actually believe that this that Emperor Norton the first existed. Um, like after um, Gaiman did the story of him in Sandman, then I actually 
Then I saw saw this picture in an exhibition, and I was like, "Dude, this is actually real!" Wow. Yeah, but it, that's that's beauty. I mean, it's like one other thing. It's just, it, it's a series about stories and the joy of storytelling. Is because mm-hmm. it's it's a great it's a great fa- it's great fantasy, and it's it's amazing the uh, the imagination and um, depth of understanding mythology that the game displays over the course of these um, primary ten volumes. Mm-hmm. Because while the overall story is Extremely well, extremely well done. I mean, it takes some very interesting twists later on, like as as Morpheus starts to realize that there is really only one choice he has for later, as as the series goes on. Um, it it wraps it and it wraps up extremely well in like in these ten volumes. When I read this, I mean, like it's I it's I really it's it's so extremely well 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 thought out that um, I look at look some of this stuff and. I realize like that Gondims have had a great idea, for, great idea for how the story is. You see the beginnings of plots like that, that culminate only in like volume nine or ten, planted all the way back in the, the very first volume. I mean, it's like it's it's great seeing how the stories stories interconnect, and it's yeah, it's not like like comics continuity heavy. I mean, you can read just about any of these individually and still get a great story or stories out of out of any of them. Mm. Yeah. So really, more than anything else. It's, if you like if you like American comics, this is the one to get. Like the ten volumes in order are Preludes and Nocturnes, The Doll's House, Dream Country, Season of Mists, The Game of You, Fables and Reflections, Brief Lives, World's End, The Kindly Ones, and The Wake. Okay. Now, Gaiman has done some spin-off or quote unquote spin-off novels in that um there's the um Endless Nights, which is um seven stories about the seven me- members of the Endless. Mm-hmm. Um, Vertigo, um, or DC Comics, um, Vertigo imprint, which is billed this is an unofficial volume eleven. Mm-hmm. Well, it's really just a collection of short stories. It's it's still worthwhile because it's I mean, like, any of the spinoffs that are written by Gaiman are worth it's getting, including um, the Dream Hunters, a spinoff um, illustrated prose novel that he did with um, Yoshitaka Amano, a vampire D in Final Fantasy fame. It's a great story because I. In all the ten volumes, um, Gaiman never actually um, did a story about a Japanese Sandman, and um, this is this is his Japanese Sandman story. And wow, it's like even uh, wow, I think with um, Amano's protection press, he really knocks it out of the park right here. Mm. It's a great it's a great story, and even though it's being adapted into um, traditional comics form by P. Craig Russell at the moment, mm-hmm. I'd still rec- still say that the um, the, the text the illustrated um, prose version with uh, Amano is the one to get. Mm. Yeah. Now there's been lots of um, other spinoff spinoffs of the same that have been done over the years because um, same as spinoffs have been kind of a, kind of a cottage industry in Vertigo for a, they were for a while. Mm-hmm. The best of which I can say is Mike Carey's um, Lucifer series, which basically takes up um, the story of Lucifer Morningstar after he quits and is just you know just kicking it as a lounge singer in L.A. And then um, Heaven comes calling and tells him, Hey, you know what? We got. We need. We need you to do a job for us. So, what do you want? The face says, "You know what? I want to go into the god business." So, Neil's still in charge of those as well. Uh, no, or is he, there, did he started? He started the series. That's a good question. Mm-hmm. Because while well, well, Gaiman, um, they said he, they said he, all the characters in here are basically are basically his own. Are his own. Yeah. They are still. Um, it's not a creator-owned series. DC still owns all the Sandman oh, characters. I got gotcha. you. All righty. However. In a rare um, show of restraint for a comic books comic books company, they realize that you know it's like they uh, that um, a lot of this, a lot of this, the um, appeal of the series is the fact that it was that it's Gaiman that without him the series kind of means nothing. So they have to be really careful how they do any kind of any kind of spinoffs with this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like with anything that that um, has his name is like solid gold sales wise. Mm. But gotcha. Yeah. And um, it's also impressive because, like, basically, when Gaiman said that he wanted to end the series at issue seventy-five, DC said, "Okay, we understand. Go for it." Mm-hmm. And he's come back um, occasionally to the franchise since then. Like I said, with um, the Dream Hunters and Endless Nights. Gotcha. But he is overall, he seems to have moved on since then. So he's just been doing his own thing, doing doing sto- other stories like Start, like Stardust and American Gods and, and Anasazi Boys. Gotcha. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Overall, it's like, like I said, Sandman, incredibly awesome. Well worth your money. Mm-hmm. Now, moving on for my pick for the absolute best comic book ever, 
is, well, to be honest, it's written by a man who, when I tell you his name, it's going to be, you should realize that it's a crime for this man to have this much talent. <laughs> it is Hayao Miyazaki mm-hmm. and his manga, Now Shiko the Valley of Wind. All right. Now, those of you, those of you um, anime fans out there who've seen the movie, it's like you know the basic story. It's, it's the story of, and for those of you who don't, you know, it's the story of, of Now Shiko, a girl who lives, lives out in the valley, place called the Valley of Wind mm-hmm. after the world has been, was um, raised to destruction in an event called the Seven Days of Fire. Much of the world has, left, has been left um, utterly inhospitable um, and is covered by, by a waste called the Sea of Corruption. Mm-hmm. Now, while most people try to live, try to eke out a me- meager existence in, the, in, the, in this um, post-apocalyptic future, Nazca tries to um, find her best, do her best to like lead to um, serve as a leader to her people and to just um, and to like find a way to um, check a balance between like what humanity needs and what and the and needs of the um, inhabitants of the um, sea of corruption, which are just huge mutated bugs that actually um, retain some kind of human intelligence in mm-hmm. there as well. Now this is much harder than you, that now naturally this is um, incredibly hard to do because you've got because while well, her village is real, is a nice out of the way area, there's also the um, the two warring, the two warring empires, Tormekia and the Dora Kingdom, mm-hmm. and it's their conflict that basically dragged Na- Nashka and her village, um, into, the, like in- into the gr- world's greater conflict, and also like tells tells of a, of a much greater greater event, um, uh, the Daikai Show, a great great wave of corruption where the sea of where the sea of corruption is going to spread out um, and cover cover you more of the land, mm-hmm. and it's. And it's it's good. It's really really great stuff. Because for me, more than anything else, it's like it just hits my sweet spot for for science fiction, for post apocalyptic stories, for for just generally epic stories. Because while the while the movie roughly covers the first two uh, covers the first events of the um, first two volumes, uh-huh. um, they, uh, Miyazaki made a lots of changes to um, like to to, uh, make, to make the story work in one movie because. Um, at, basically, at the um, at the end of the um, in the book, like Nashka isn't um, resurrected by the um, by the giant by the giant um, 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 pill bug like Oma. Yeah, Oma. Yeah, yeah. she uh, in this she's she's eventually told by them by that some great great evil is coming, and she she sets out on her own own to stop it. Mm. And then it's and the, the series go the series just goes out from there because like it's cause even though it's not just about her, it's about it's about her um, her master master Yupa who basically tries follows her. Falls in her footsteps. Is he really? Because he's he's kind of like the um, the badass swordsman of the of the series. He's he, in any of the series, he'd be the hero. But mm-hmm. in this series, he realizes that hey, you know what? This isn't my story. This is this is Nauschka's. I've got to do my best to support her, like in in any situation. But not steal her spotlight or thunder. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. And uh, it's like and of course like it's it, the, the the with the way the story goes. Uh, oh. And also, like the tale of Princess Kushana, the um, heiress to the um, to the um, king of Tormekia, who finds herself marked for death by her own, by her own family, mm-hmm. because well, because even though even though she re- like she she could have been the hero as well, because she's got she's got the killer instinct and the and the drive to succeed at all costs. She she is far she's far too blood bloodthirsty and bloodthirsty and single minded to try to, to pull this off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But really, it's like it's like Miyazaki tells us, tells a great story, but and and the end is art is absolutely incredible because like you, this is like Miyazaki's only extended comic book, comics work and mm. packs an incredible amount of detail on each page without 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 it overwhelming the story. Mm. Yeah, and just like the way the way the story goes, I mean, it's like it takes lots of interesting twists and turns in the. He's like, because Nashka, like, she changes along the way. She realizes that, you know, like, sometimes, like, the best, like, what some people have thought about the best way to survive isn't the isn't the right way to do it. And also, as the um, as the motives of the um, people who caused the original Seven Days of Fire, like, they had they had their own plans to try and try and save the world. And once they were revealed to Nashka, she's got to make her own decisions about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because overall, like. So what I like about this, it's a, it's a great epic story. I mean, it's, it shoots through the stars, and it succeeds. It just grab, it's like it's 
you just watch, you just reading this, and you realize like, wow, it's it's got it's got everything, human human drama act, human drama action, even some even some bits of comedy as well. Because never the parts of it where it stops itself, you know, just take laugh a bit and just and just go on from there. I mean, yeah. it's really no no series has has grabbed me as as much as this one, and it is currently available from Viz in seven um, individual volumes. And like there's they're only ten bucks each, so it's like if they're if you're looking for some, for the perfect gift to give to someone, well, I mean unless they absolutely hate manga <laughs> or hate um like fantasy science fiction combinations, mm. then um like this is the one to get. All right, it's like more than more than anything more than anything else. If you like I said, if you buy one comic book by listening to me, you want to buy Nashka the Valley of Wind. Mm. Yeah, and well, I guess with that, I really can't say anything more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I hope all I can say now is just a happy, happy gift hunting, and I hope you have your success for Christmas. All right. See you next time. Later.